Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Session Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the face in my resistance to truth Q&A presentation, Jesus answers questions from the audience about the material covered in the previous presentation, Facing My Resistance to Truth, recorded on the 23rd of February 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. So now we've just replaced this to truth. And let's focus on the aspect of our resistance to it or our desire to reflect upon the fact that we don't want to receive it. Any questions about that? Can I just say something in opening because none of you got hands up yet? And that is that um, truth to me is one of the most, if not the most, important quality aside from faith. in terms of what you can develop in terms of a desire within yourself. Because without it, nothing else can really come to you. Right? It's such an essential thing to understand that truth is one of the most, imp it is the most important thing, aside from development of faith, truth is the most important thing that you can be focused on. Truth opens up everything. All you've got to do, if we ever stuck, you just go, oh, I'm not accepting a truth. Just be honest. I'm not accepting a truth. Otherwise, I wouldn't be shut down. It's, it's always to do with truth. The reason why you're shut down. Now, truth is the antidote to fear. So you know all that fear you have. So, you know, when we, said, when we listed all the things about change and there was all these fears that come up, right? All, we were writing down all these fears. Well, truth is the thing that will confront every one of those fears emotionally for you. Truth is the thing that will do it. Right? And that's very important to understand that truth is essential for your future life and progress. And in fact, this is where you can have a desire to know the truth. Now, many of you have expressed a desire to know external truth. All right? Haven't you? Otherwise, you wouldn't have listened for ages to God's truth, right? You've expressed a desire to know external truth. And external truth, have you noticed external truth sort of makes your heart glad? Doesn't it? It makes you feel Happy that you now know something that makes logical sense and it joins together and joins all the dots and answers all the questions. It really, really helps, doesn't it? Like, and you notice it allays a lot of fears about this sort of investigation of religious truth and so forth. It does. But the area where the majority of you really crash is personal truth. You don't have the same relationship with with external truth as you do with personal truth. With personal truth, what's the feeling? Uh, oh, no, that's wrong. Oh, I can't bear that. I don't want to hear that. No, I'm not listening to that. Right. No, I'm going to fight that. Isn't it? Very, very different attitude to the other in many cases. So let's go to Avira. It's kind of a similar question to I asked before. Mm -hmm. um, in the fullness of time, most of the truth I've heard, I'm like, oh, thank God I was told that. Yeah. But my initial response is angry defensive. Is defensive and angry. Yeah. Yeah. So how do I... Because I'm, I'm... Can I show you why, the, why it's defensive and angry? Yeah, and I'm, I'm actually getting sick of it now. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> and the person who's sharing truth with you are getting sick of it too, by the way. <laughs> but uh, but let's, let's look at why. <clears throat> 
the main reason why we react defensively and angrily is because our sense of worth is tied up in the truth or in let's call it the answer whatever the answer is right so what's happening is that you've yet to separate inside of yourself this connection between your worth and already knowing the truth you believe knowing the truth is what gives you your worth now a person who's at one with God doesn't believe their worth is linked to truth at all the reason why they don't is they know that there's still an infinite amount of truth to receive and yet they are feel completely worthy right now what the problem is on earth is that our worth is connected to what we believe is the truth so let's just rub this out for a moment and we really need to call that what our truth don't we and what was our truth again ah uh, yes fear so i'll just write our truth and i'll just put in what it really is which is fear and so what we're really doing is we're saying our worth is connected to our truth or our worth is connected to our fears right when you separate your worth from your personal truth you no longer feel confronted w with your emotional state when you hear a truth about yourself you no longer have an investment in you being right right so this is about if you think about it here we want to feel like we're right right and we have we are invested in it we are invested in our personal opinion being right and this is where i see many of you make huge mistakes you have huge emotional investments in your personal truth which i see mostly as just fears but you have personal emotional investment in it being correct because if it's correct it means you're worth something right it means you have validity it means that you uh, uh, have have knowledge and it means that you you have some value right now a person who who understands the, the who really loves truth does not have a connection emotionally within them between the the value their personal value and how much truth they know Do you get that? A person who truly understands the truth and also understands worth does not have a connection between their worth and how much truth they know. You follow? So in other words, how much truth I know has no effect on my worth. Positively or negatively. Right. but for yourselves most of you have a connection between how much truth you think you know and how worthy you are how much worth you have what your value is so you measure your value by how much truth you think you know right now this kind of dynamic was set up usually in our school years but sometimes beforehand but definitely in our school years because because your value as a student was gauged by how much you got accurately right how much you knew in a certain subject you see so so there was this relationship established during that phase of your life where you now believe your worth is connected to how much you know right and that and that's carried on through most people's adult life that's why we're addicted on this planet to getting higher education in the form of university degrees and so forth when when you can see that there's a lot of jobs on this planet that need to be done and none of them require university degrees right but 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 we're addicted to it because our worth is associated with what we know and what and and even associated with the certificate that we get at the end of the day right this is a problem but this is this problem causes you to respond very negatively when you're confronted with personal truth you can see the relationship
As soon as the personal truth hits you, you're going, now my worth's being attacked. Now you're saying I'm not worth as much. You're saying that I'm not value, I can't be valued as much now. And so the average person feeling that gets angry. You follow? You get angry, resentful, resistive, because you haven't separated the connection between worth and truth. Yeah? Yeah. And I see that going on all the time. It's, ter it's a terrible thing. It's, took, it's taken Mary many years to get rid of that. So now she loves truth, but it's taken many years for her to get over this idea that her worth is connected with how much she knows. Uh, so every time you raise something with a person like that, they're instantly defensive, instantly want to attack you, instantly want to have an argument, instantly want to fight, right? because, because of this association between the two. Can I just say to you, God does not care how much you know. <laughs> God would like you to know everything God knows. But God doesn't care, he doesn't place your value upon how much you know. Right? See, many of you think of having, making a mistake is the end of the world, right? <laughs> God just feels, making a mistake, you're going to make a mistake because you don't know what he knows. To, to God, making, humans making a mistake is normal. You follow? When, it, when it, in terms of a practical mistake, the real mistake, which you're generally not worried about, is a mistake in love. That's when God thinks, no, there's a real mistake. Right? And for the majority of us, we don't value those real mistakes because we're more interested in what we know and what we've done and whether we're, what we've done seems to be what everybody else believes should be done. And that's how we view our life. So this is a big problem, associating our worth and what we do, right, with the truth. Very, 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 you know, it's a very damaging process to do that. And this is why many of you are very resistive to God's truth. Because you feel like whenever you hear it, you're just getting attacked. Uh, that's why, you know, sometimes in the previous times when I've had a talk with you about a certain subject, the whole mood of the audience, you feel it, it just goes... <laughs> Right, and and that's what you're feeling there. The association between your worth or your value and the truth you're hearing. So you become very judgmental in that place, judgmental of yourself. And then, of course, because you don't want to judge yourself, and it's a painful emotion, you project it outwards at other people. You, you attack other people as a result. You follow? So, so this is something you need to do if, you, if you're going to deal with this resistance to truth. You're going to have to disassociate the connection. You're going to break, break this connection between the concept of your being worth something only if you know something. Right, a little tiny baby in your arms, is it valuable? Well, you believe it is, don't you? If it's valuable, how, how can it be valuable under your definition? Because it doesn't know anything, does it? So why is it that this little baby who doesn't know anything is valuable? And then you as an adult who ha barely know anything more are no longer valuable. <laughs> why is that the case? Somebody joined what you know with what you're worth, right? Somebody did that. Right? So that's going to have to be separated. Yep. Barbara. Um, AJ, everything you said just then applies to me. Mm -hmm. um, What's the best way As to separate it? As it does probably most people, right? Yeah. Well, yep. what's the best way to separate it? Because that is a huge blocking point for me. Well, uh, um, a good way is to start looking at all the times you were punished for not knowing something. Yeah, I used to get a belting every time my report came home from school. Yeah. 
So, you, you know, there's emotions there that need to be processed. The majority of us have been punished for not knowing things. God never punishes you for not knowing something. Right? So, so it's very important to understand that, 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 you know, not knowing something is something that is a big problem on the planet. Like, you know, like, like here's things that have been aimed at me. Um, do you know the future? And I say, no, well, you can't be Jesus then. Why is that? Like, I don't see the logic there. I'm just a person who doesn't know things. God's the only person that knows everything. So how can it be, how can this illog illogical premise arise that I'm not Jesus because I don't know everything? If I knew everything, I'd be God. I definitely wouldn't be Jesus. <laughs> Does that make sense? So, so, so it's projected all the time. Anybody in authority that's projected out generally, like you have to know everything. You, you, you look at the way that uh, politi politicians constantly are being versed in what they call, you know, the, what do they call it, the word? Well, no, it's, a, it's like, they've, uh, forget the word. Spin, that's it. Like, and why is that? Why do they need spin? Right? Because, because they've got to get everything correct because the whole population believes that unless they got everything correct, then they misspoke and they, you know, they attack the misspeaking. Right? You, you look at how much you get attacked for just saying the wrong thing even if you didn't mean to say it. <laughs> you say, I didn't mean that. Oh, it's too late now. Like, <laughs> you know, everyone's going to get into you, right? And that all comes from this childhood stuff that's going on emotionally. It's a very important, it's, a, it's one of the main reasons why we're resistive to truth. It's also one of the main reasons why we're resistive to experimentation. The only people who are really allowed to experiment are scientists, and even then they've got to get it right as much as they possibly can, otherwise they don't get funded, right? So, so, so you're not allowed to experiment and, and work out that something didn't work, yeah. right? You're not allowed to even make any mistakes whatsoever. Now, from God's perspective, you're allowed to make mistakes. Isn't that a relief to know? So you can go out today, do something unloving, and go, oh, that was a terrible mistake. I need to not do that tomorrow. And God's not going to jump on your back and jump up and down and you and punish you and swear at you and carry on and curse you and, 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 and cause the rest of your life to be miserable, you know, just because you did that thing wrong. All right? And that's wonderful. It gives you the freedom to experiment, the freedom to work your way through things, right? That's the beauty of God's truth is it allows you this freedom. Once you know the truth that, that your worth and your value is not connected to what you know, now you can experiment with what you know without your value being experimented with. Your value is still the same value, whether you know an immense amount of things or nothing. So I'm, like, I'm just as valuable as, and the child is just as valuable as me. Any child, any newborn baby, and they know nothing in comparison with myself. But from God's opinion, God's opinion is we're worth the same. So we need to disassociate this, we break down this thing, but it comes from, as, uh, as I pointed out, Bob, it comes from our childhood experiences with regard to what's happened to us. And so the, the reversal of the process is to feel about what's happened to us and to allow ourselves to grieve what's happened to us in our childhood that's caused our worth to be associated with what we know. Yep. It's been a big thing for your life. Yep. If we could just go straight behind you, Bob, to Pete. <coughs> yeah, thanks for that, Jesus. That was just perfect. I just realised for myself, it's like I'm trying to protect the feeling of avoiding being stupid. Yes. So I don't want to, I, at all costs, I don't want to feel stupid. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm stupid a lot. <laughs> yeah, I am. Like, you, you know, you can't help but be when you're experimenting things. You go, experiment, yeah, that didn't work. Yeah, experiment with it, that didn't work. Right. I'm going through in a big experiment now that I've been in for 53 years, right? And and at the moment I feel a bit frustrated about that experiment, <laughs> but 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 it doesn't have an impact or shouldn't have an impact on my worth. I'm still valuable from God's perspective. Like when you and and the more you do that 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 other people have never done, the the more value you should feel in yourself. 
even if you turn out it turns out to be wrong a mistake so if you're if you're doing something from motivation that's pure right no matter what the outcome from God's perspective it's the pure motivation that is that is a beautiful thing right if it's based on love and truth and it's pure motivation so even if you fail from God's perspective that's okay the motivation was right. Yeah. Yeah, because there's this feeling that I have to have got it right, or otherwise I'm going to feel stupid. Yeah, yeah, and that that also then causes people to do things like, and some things that you do, Peter, do things like, you know, make out that you know what it, what they're talking about when they don't, when you don't have no idea. You'll notice that when somebody asks me something, I'll go, I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry. Like you're allowed to say that. You're allowed to not know. You're allowed to not understand. You're allowed to ask more questions. You know, God, God's, you got the freedom with that. You weren't allowed to in your childhood, and most of you weren't allowed to even at school, and so this is the reason why you have this direct association. Yeah. Thanks so much for that. Yep. So, Mia? Um, so so when people have used that same emotion to control like i know more than you therefore yep. uh, you should do what i say they're way out of line aren't they and so spirits can also like impress that on someone and then you of course they can and they're way out of line too aren't they so yes so when somebody comes to me and says oh you don't know what i know so you should do this and that i go no i shouldn't you're being unloving right now and i'd never follow anybody who's unloving and so if one is in a habit of then following, then one has to address the pain about being projected that we're worthless and... Correct. Okay. Thanks. Correct. Yep, correct. If we come to Karina and then Catherine. Um, Jesus, you were talking then about um, when you um, don't know something. Uh, a similar one would be, one big one I have about being wrong and guilty when I've been told I was wrong and guilty all the time when I was little. Mm -hmm. So when you used to tell me lots of truth, I used to go away and I beat myself up for weeks Because you feel months. wrong all the time, feel guilty. But isn't that still associating your worth mm -hmm. with being wrong? Yeah. See, so in my mind, it's okay if you're wrong. Mm. Right? It's just something to correct. It's, a, it's okay if you're wrong. See, it doesn't... Like, for me, if someone tells me I'm wrong, fair enough, tell me what's right. That's all right. I got no problem with that, right? And this is what I'm saying. You're still associating your worth with being wrong. Yep. So I need to feel about childhood and how I was made wrong. So. Yes, you need to release the the connection between how your how you were pulled down with regard to your worth, and how that was associated with events that where you were told you were wrong. So, so usually when someone's told they're wrong when they're a child, they're not only wrong, they're also stupid and idiot and a number of other things which are all what? They're all pulling down the worth of the individual, aren't they? So, so when I'm telling you some truth about yourself, I don't feel you're stupid or an idiot. You're just wrong. <laughs> That's all. You follow? But because you've been told in the past, and there's a lot of hurt inside of you in the past about being wrong being associated with being stupid, and wrong being associated with being an idiot, and wrong being associated with having less value, you've, you, whenever you hear you're wrong, you then also hear that you have less value, and that you're stupid, and that you're an idiot. Yes, and it used to feel that I was endemically wrong. So well, this is the reason why. So, so, so yeah. This is the reason why. You just need to feel, you need to feel the associations of what happened. Mm. That's all. Just like I said to Barb. Mm. Yep. Catherine? Um, I have processed part of some of my emotional injuries. What mm -hmm. I want to know is, why is it so difficult each time when something comes up is it my resistance to truth that I find it so difficult and don't want to go there? And yet I know that after I've had a cry about something, that so much improves. Yeah. I feel it's two things. It's more your resistance to action and emotion than to truth and faith. So you've developed some faith now. 
you you also have more of a desire for truth now but there's still a deep amount of fear about dealing with emotion right and there's still a deep amount of fear about having to take action after you've dealt with the emotion what kind of action do you take and so so we need to see the whole picture and we've only seen half of it at this point yes. uh, with regard to these resistances at this point uh, but we need to see the whole picture as to see which part of it is affecting you in, in terms of your own progression. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yes, yeah. So, so remember, at this stage, we're queuing out, queuing and aing, <laughs> if there's such a thing, with, with faith and truth. But there's the two other things of action and emotion that also must be factored into our resistance to facing or, or using our will. Right. Yes. So our resistance to using our will governed by the four things, not just by a couple of them. Yep. Thank you. Yep, straight behind you. And this will be our last question, I have to be. Eh? I feel my resistance very physically. Mm -hmm. Can you say something about that? I feel everybody feels their resistance physically. If you could feel it as a, if you were sensitive to it emotionally on the other end, you could feel it like a barrage, like a wall. And there's, there's two types of uh, resistance generally that I feel from you. One, from, from, you, from you collectively, I'm talking now. One's like a wall, and you're just trying to stand behind the wall. You, you follow me? Protecting yourself. One, that one doesn't throw out crap. It, it just is there, solid, immovable. Corny's good at that one. Just immovable, aren't you, mate? <laughs> how, how he just looked on his face. <laughs> Can we just show that look again? Uh, I'll get <laughs> uh, that look. Yep. So how, how, how that is, is exactly how you feel under those circumstances. Just like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not moving on this. Nothing you can say, nothing you can do is going to shift me. I'm just staying where I am. That's it. Does that make sense? Right. And that, that's not a, a, a rage-based projection at another person. It's just like, I'm not going anywhere. Nothing you can do is going to move me. Right? The, the second one that many of you try because you learnt as a, as a child that it was quite effective, and that is here you are, you know, and you realise that if you projected all of this rage, right, here's the other person who's trying to share some truth with you, and you project all this rage at them, the majority of people will withdraw. They will stop doing what they're doing. You've learned through your childhood that projecting rage is one of the fastest ways to manipulate another person into not doing what they're currently doing. Right? Now, those of you who do that, you know you do that, right? Those of you who do that. And that way is an outward attack of another person in order to prevent what you believe is their attack of you. You follow? And all of them are felt physically. They are. They are all... If you could actually feel them, it does feel, when you're really sensitive to it, it does feel like either a solid, immovable rock <laughs> or just this barrage of rage. And, and both of them, if a, if a person's truly connected, they'll feel that in themselves, in their, in their emotional state. Yep. So every one of these things will have a physical effect on your body as well, obviously. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, well, that's uh, our resistance to truth Q&A that we've done. What we're going to do now is have a break for 10 minutes and then we'll get stuck on to the fear, the uh, resistance to action. Uh, part of this equation.